Hey guys, it's Patrick with Uncle Bill's Camping. Today we're going to be talking about this two burner stove by Eureka called the Spire. If this is something you're interested in. Keep watching this video. I'm going to tell you all about this stove. All right, guys, so just like I said in the intro, we're talking about the Eureka Spire stove. And um, the main reason that I got this stove was simmer control. I have a Coleman stove, which I will not complain about whatsoever. It works great to the extent of what you expect a Coleman stove to do, which is to heat stuff up and to be hot. Uh, simmer control was never really the strong point of Coleman stoves. The one I've had, I've had since the 90s. It still works really good, but I kind of want to step it up a little bit, have something to where I could cook stuff on low heat and not have to worry about constantly standing over, in it, over it, wondering if I'm going to burn something. Now, if you're not familiar um, with the story, Eureka is owned by Johnson Outdoors. Johnson Outdoors purchased Jet Boil, which is a fantastic stove. I think most hikers have one or know of it. Um, and so, you know, it's a very adjustable, very reliable stove. This stove is supposed to be built with jet boil technology. Now, I don't think it, it doesn't use the burner that they use in the jet boil flash. It's the ones that they actually use like in their, um, their bigger stoves, their clamshell stoves at 10,000 BTUs, I think on each burner. And, uh, you know, so plenty of heat. And if it's as adjustable as those stoves are, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, getting into the exterior features about this, you're going to notice it has these rubber bumper guards on the uh, on the corners to kind of keep it from getting dented and scratched, which is pretty good. You know, it's going to keep it in good shape when it's in storage. Also, you know, if you're setting it down on the concrete picnic tables, things like that, it's not going to get dinged up real easy. The other thing I like about it, and it's a little thing, it's just my kind of thing, is the fact that the handle is just built into it. You know, I have a I have a much fancier um, Coleman Gladiator stove that um, is the Parks Edition. It's painted. It's a real nice stove. I don't want to use it because it's a Parks Edition. It's a collector's item. I'd like to hang on to it, maybe pass it down one day. But it has this handle on the front that sticks out. And I'm always worried about if I put this like in my, my storage box or a storage bag, that it's going to get smacked. It's going to break the handle or, you know, it's, it's going to mess something up on it. So I really like the fact the handle is actually just inside of it. It's a little thing, but, you know, I'm glad that it's there. Uh, getting into another thing on the stove is the fact you have your regular um, attachment right here for the uh, for the bottle to go in. But the other thing it has is this jet link. And what that is is basically it's a hose that attaches to it. They let you daisy chain this to another stove, and it also lets you hook up to other jet boil stoves. Not all of them, but some. I think the larger like base camp kind of stoves, and also they make a stove that's similar to the Flash called the Luna that lets you hook a hose to that and it runs on the propane instead of, instead of butane. So that works out pretty good. Now, um, I'm not really happy about the fact that it doesn't come with the hose. I figured that that would come with it. Uh, you know, and maybe in the future, you know, they'll decide to go ahead and ship it out with it. But right now I think it's, it's sold separately. I don't think you get it when you buy the Luna and I don't think it actually comes with the stove. So it's like a $20 purchase. So to me, it's, it's really not worth it at this point. Hopefully uh, Eureka will actually start selling that with the stove uh, sometime in the future. But getting back to the, uh, the exterior of this, the other thing I like about this is the fact that it has this um, kind of dimpled surface on the top and it's painted and you can tell when you run your hands over when you look at it that it it's made to uh kind of take a beating you know now, i mean not saying you can't dent this thing because it'd be pretty you know fairly easy to dent if you were trying but you can tell the paint's not going to come off of it real easy really reminds me of the old coleman stoves and that kind of surface they had on it that even if it got hit the paint didn't come off and to be honest that's what made me pass on a lot of different Coleman stoves was the fact that they started using this really smooth surface on the top that you just knew if anything drug across it, it was getting scratched, it was going to go down to the metal and you're going to have some corrosion problems. 
So, you know, I really like to see this in a stove. I mean, this is really probably the outside of hiking gear, the first stove that I've used that hasn't been a Coleman. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this performs. All that being said, we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pause the video for a second, get it set up, and we're gonna see how this works on high. We're also gonna check the simmer control and see how that works. All right, guys, so we got everything set up. We got our uh, one pound bottle set up. We're gonna go ahead and fire up the first burner here. Go ahead and get our uh, second burner going. Now, first thing I wanna do, uh, well, actually, I'd like to go ahead and point out, these actually have a pretty good little lock mechanism on them. But the only way that the back is actually going to stay up is if you have the uh, the wing guards hooked in. So I think later on I'm probably going to put a screw over here and maybe a small chain and chain it down to the bottom down here. That way I don't have to have the wing guards up. They will fall over just to the side. That will give me a little bit more room to be able to put bigger pans on the top of it here. And I won't have them all bunched up. And we're going to go ahead and turn these burners up just to give you an idea of how high up they go it's pretty impressive um, as much as they put out it is quite a bit of heat they're pushing out and I don't know if you can really hear the burners it's not putting out a lot of noise but it is putting out quite a bit of flame. Now we're going to go ahead and check the simmer control, see how low we can put these down. Another thing that I like is the, uh, the knobs have quite a bit of tension in them, so they don't feel real loose. But there is quite a bit of, uh, of travel to adjust them. You can see it's already made the uh, made the grill red hot. I don't know if you can really see that over here and over there, but that's actually you know it's just glowing red. That's how fast it brought the temperature up on those. Now you can see it's holding at a pretty good simmer. I'm going to see how much lower I can get these. So that's about as low as you're going to get them. I mean, but, you know, I know it's kind of hard to tell. Maybe I'd kick one of these lights off and uh, you can see that how much, uh, how low that flame is. And you can see that that's, it's barely anything. But I mean, there it is. If you're looking for simmer control, I don't think you can get a flame that's going to be much lower than that on one of these stoves. And I mean, going from that low to that high, you know, I think that's pretty good. I don't think I'm going to have too many problems being able to uh, cook stuff on a low setting with this stove whatsoever. And I do like the fact, like I said, there's a lot of tension in the uh, in the knob. So, you know, wherever you put it at, you don't have to worry about going over or under. The knob's not going to move once you uh, take your hand off of it. Another thing I like, it's got this stainless steel plate on the inside. It uh, looks like it'd be pretty easy for cleanup. Of course, it's great; just pops out. It, uh, you know, it's not bolted in or anything, so it looks like it'd be fairly easy to do cleanup on this. But yeah, there it is. I mean, there's your simmer control. I don't think you're going to get much better than that, uh, as far as a two burner stove goes. I mean, you know, it's it's pretty decent.
All right, guys, that's the nuts and bolts of it. Uh, you've seen for yourself the simmer control, how it functions on high, how it functions on low. And, you know, the main reason I got it is how it's going to function on low. It looks like it's going to work okay. I like the fact there's a lot of tension in these knobs right here, so it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't look like it's going to slide or readjust itself once you set it where you want it at. You know, big drawback for me is the fact that the, the lid doesn't stay open unless you have the wind guards attached to it. I'm going to fix that problem easily enough with a couple of, uh, you know, screws and a small chain. That way I'll be able to lay these down and, uh, you know, maybe be able to put some bigger pots on it. You know, other than that, it's a pretty good stove. I'll leave a link in the description down below. And this is Patrick from Uncle Bill's Camping. Thank you for taking the time to look at my videos. I'll see you guys the next time around. Mm. Oh, love coffee. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please feel free to hit that subscribe or like button down below. You can also find me on Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, UncleBillsCamping.com, here on YouTube, and vid.me. And from Uncle Bill's Camping, this is Patrick saying thank you for looking at my video.